Guitars have been around for a long time now, and their popularity is only increasing. Many people enjoy playing the guitar because it's a very versatile instrument, which justifies that a guitar is a complex machine and a combination of thousands of different pieces, each of which is essential to the instrument and must be present for it to function. How a guitar is made. A guitar is made of a hollow body that's made out of wood like alder or mahogany. But if you think that the same wood is used to make the whole thing, then you might be wrong. The top is either made of maple or spruce, while the neck is made of maple or ebony, and the fingerboard is made of ebony, rosewood, or even mother of pearl. The bridge is typically made of ebony, rosewood, or ebony and mother of pearl. Finally, the finish is made of lacquer, and the binding is typically made of white celluloid. Needless to say, the material used to make the guitar reflects how expensive it might be. The guitar is then put into a case made of wood, usually cherry. All guitars have at least six strings that are stretched over a thin piece of wood called the fretboard. The strings are attached to the tuning pegs that can be rotated to tighten or loosen them. This allows players to adjust the pitch of each string to create different notes. Guitars also have a body that's typically made of wood or plastic. Materials and equipment needed. When a guitar is built, a variety of materials and equipment such as wood, saws, screws, glue, and various parts is used in the process. For more detailed work, you would normally see a drill is used to carve beautiful designs. Of course, various bits are also used for drilling holes and screwing together parts. Book matching Book matching is the process in which the wood that is required for the top of the guitar is cut from lumber. Two sheets are sliced out from a single piece of wood, and both the sheets are of the same length and width, but the thickness gets reduced to the half. Book matching is done so that the sheets gain a symmetrical grain pattern, which is essential. The two sheets are then matched and observed for irregularities, and ensure that the continuity in the grains is maintained throughout. After close observation, the two sheets are glued together and left to dry. Once the glue dries, the new board created by joining the two sheets is sanded until the desired thickness is achieved. It is again inspected for quality and when done, is graded according to color, regularity of grain, and closeness and ensure that it does not have blemishes. The next step is to cut and shape the top into the guitar shape we know. The piece of wood is however still left oversized since there will be a final trimming process involved. The sound hole is then sawed in a perfect circle. Several slots are carved around the sound hole as well in the form of concentric circles. They only act as decorative inlays around the hole. Strutting After the top piece is ready, wood braces are glued to the underside of it. This process is known as strutting. It has primarily two purposes. The first purpose is bracing the wood against the pull of the strings which will be added later, and the second is to maintain the way the top piece vibrates, without which the sound would not be perfect. Strutting is one process that's done differently in different companies. It has major impact on the tone of the guitar. Most wooden braces nowadays are fixed with an X pattern. This pattern, which is the most popular amongst guitar makers and was originally designed by Martin Company, is believed by experts to be able to provide the most beautiful acoustics and tone. While Martin Company decided to stick with their original design, other popular companies such as Gibson and Ovation are still experimenting with different combinations and further improvements that could be made to the X pattern gluing style of strutting. The back part of the guitar does not serve a lot of acoustic purposes, but the guitar's sound is still heavily dependent on it. Wooden braces are added to the back as well, but here, the braces are placed parallel from left to right along with another strip that runs down across the parallel braces. This strip is placed across the length of the glue joint of the back. The back, just like the top, is made by cutting two sheets and gluing them together. The same piece of lumber is used, which was previously used to make the top. This is done so that the grains match at both the top and bottom. Construction of the neck if you've ever played the guitar before, you already know that the neck is pretty important. The neck is where you do most of your fretting, which is the technical term for pressing down the strings of the guitar. 
The size of the neck on a guitar, as well as the type of fretting used, affect which notes can be played on a guitar. Traditionally, the frets on a guitar are metal strips that hold the strings rather than actual frets that you would find on a piano. The neck of a guitar is made from a variety of materials, such as wood, plastic, or even graphite. The type of material used in the construction of the neck affects how easy it is to play the guitar, so it's important that you like the feel of the neck on a guitar. There are a wide variety of materials used for the neck, including rosewood, ebony, graphite, and even carbon fiber. Construction of the body Before you can assemble the body of a guitar, you first have to make the chassis out of a wooden form. Once the chassis is made, it's cut apart and the body is shaped from the pieces. The chassis is made from wood and forms the base of the guitar body, giving it the shape and aesthetics of a guitar. The chassis for an electric guitar is usually made of maple, while the mahogany or basswood chassis is used for an acoustic guitar. Electric guitar bodies are usually made from an acoustically resonant material, while the body of an acoustic guitar is made from a material that's less likely to resonate. The top plate is made from a variety of materials and is glued to the chassis to form the top of the guitar. The top plate can be made of several different materials, such as maple, rosewood, or even plastic. The tremolo bridge is a style of the bridge that's used on some acoustic guitars. Using different materials for the level of resonance helps to have a build that'll help you have a better sound output, especially when playing for a group of people. When it comes down to semi-acoustic guitars, this construction is pretty much the same as the acoustic one. The exception being the addition of an electric pickup tool attached near the bottom of the fretboard, just above the sound hole. This may vary for brands across the spectrum, but the basic principle remains the same, having the benefit of both worlds, electric and acoustic. Final Assembly and Tuning The guitar is finished once it's all put together and tuned to the proper pitch. While the wood and hardware are finished, the strings are often left out for a few days to let them settle or relax before being tuned. Once the guitar is assembled and tuned, the player can start to play it. Some guitars, especially those with a scratchy sound, require a little playing before they sound good, while others are ready to go right out the box. You might have guessed by now that a guitar is a delicate instrument, and once you start playing the guitar, you need to take care of it. Cleaning and making sure that the fretboard remains clean while using it for long periods of time will help you ensure the guitar's quality in terms of sound and appearance. Putting the guitar in a case and tuning it up often will help you keep it in good shape as you play it. With that, this was how guitars are made. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.